So you make do with two cars, and sometimes you end up even walking to the gigs. We can't employ roadies, so we have to hunt the gear ourselves. Imagine what it would be like if we didn't have all this to do. We'd be in a better frame of mind for playing. Big bands don't have this problem, as they have the people working for them, which we're working up to. It's a drum machine, really, but it's called Doctor Rhythm. And the thing about it is you can program it. And it's one Steve plays along with improvising on the drums. Well, it's the largest instrument, really. It's the instrument with the most parts to it. And as I'm playing it very hard during the set, I want to make sure that the sound comes across, even though I'm really belting them, which I will be in the middle of the set. So it takes a long time to set the drums up. It can take about up to an hour sometimes just for the drum sound. We used to play a gig, we won't mention the name of the place, but we used to play a gig at some pub. And once we had three bands on, and the three bands were of good quality, you know, they weren't rubbish or anything. They were, well, just a good bands, us as well. <laughs> and then we got £15 for three bands. You can imagine that, that's £5 a band. So, I mean, that barely pays for your petrol. And if you were hiring a van, well, you just nothing there at all, you know, you just got no money. So, you end up paying to play the gig instead of getting paid. <laughs> The sound check engineer's job is to ensure that the instruments come over on an equal balance so they can all be heard clearly. The aim of the sound check is to faithfully reproduce the quality of the sound in a studio. Normally you put your faith in the mixer man because even if you're playing your best, he can make it sound good or bad. Luckily, tonight, we have got a friend of ours. He's a good mixer who knows and likes our music. He'll mix it the way we like it. We like to chat with friends, but we're usually rushing around, so it's just snatched conversation. It's nice to see lots of unfamiliar faces, especially if they come up and tell us they think we're good. Although it's nice to play to our friends, it would be a good test for the band to get a gig outside Liverpool to see how we go down. There's only one dressing room here. They don't have separate dressing rooms for the females and the males. You know, it's either bundling together or I have to come and change and lose, which is what I normally do. And it's difficult because it's a, you know, it's the public one for the whole. So you get all people coming in, you dive into the loos, you know, there's all people walking in and out, you're trying to get changed, but it doesn't really matter. We're separated from the group just before we go on stage, and. Sometimes I, do, I just get this feeling, it's a premonition. I'm standing here putting my makeup on, and I just imagine that they're going on stage and that they're starting the set without me, you know, just premonitions of me dashing out there, you know, half dressed or something. I think there's a good amount yeah. of people in there. Is it? Yeah. Is it? I think so. Yeah. It's a good atmosphere, isn't it? Oh, yeah. There's loads of people, I don't know, they're all chatting Have away. Oh, the machine, it's a straight line, isn't it? Yeah. What? 
If you could go in the attitude of a gig, oh, here's another gig, we'll just play, oh, we'll have our sound check, go and have a drink, and get on stage, it doesn't have the same effect. Whereas if you wear different clothes, no sounds. I mean, it sounds as if it would make that much difference, but it does. If you, it's more impact if you dress up on stage. Thank you. 